Now, Asus has been killing it with the Zenbook line here in 2024. It all started back in December, actually, when I got my hands on the Asus Zenbook 14 OLED with 120 Hertz OLED display. It was really good, fantastic. It also had really good processor, the Core Ultra 7, 155H. It also had the Intel Arc graphics. If you didn't see that review, I'll leave a link in the description below. We're approaching almost 200,000 views on that. I expect that hopefully soon. And I think it's a really good one. I also looked at the Asus ZenBook 14 OLED, the Q425. That is a little bit more step down, more affordable option. And I think it gives you a lot of value there, a lot of bang for the buck, another good one. And that, of course, I will leave a link in the description below. Asus also has another ZenBook 14 OLED that we're gonna look at here today. But this one is running the AMD variant processor. Of course, the AMD Ryzen 7 8840HS. This has the integrated Radeon 780M graphics and the performance was very good. It's got a beautiful OLED display. It's also got really good battery life and everything you'd expect from the ZenBook line here for 2024. There's a lot to like here, ladies and gentlemen. So sit back, relax. And here's my review of the Asus ZenBook 14 OLED running the AMD Ryzen processor here for 2024. Coming up. Now, before we get to the unit itself, I just want to let everyone know in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by ASUS. I'm not being sponsored by ASUS. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. ASUS is not getting copy approval. That means they're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this unit is on loan from ASUS, and once this review is done, I'll be sending it back. Now, right now, it's on sale at Walmart for a very affordable price, $7.99. That gets you the OLED display. It's full HD+, 60 hertz. Keep that in mind. AMD Ryzen 7 8840HS, 16 gigabytes of memory, 512 gigabytes of SSD storage. Again, that is a steal in my book, especially with that high-end display. Yes, it's not the 2.8K OLED display we saw on the Intel variant back in December, but this certainly gives you a lot of bang for the buck. And those that want an AMD Ryzen processor, it's here with the AI effects. Again, for those interested, I'll drop a link in the description below for more information and where you can buy one. You know the drill, folks. Let's get this out of the box. Okay, once again, we get some pretty nice packaging here. Looks like there's no sleeve like we got on the UX3405. Now, this, of course, is the UM3406HA. So there are some differences here. This is the AMD variant. We just looked at a pretty affordable SKU, the Q425. I will leave a link for those that didn't see it in the description below. But packaging is always as very good, of course, as usual here with Asus. So very impressive. So you get some documentation, some warranty information, paperwork, Pretty standard stuff here. You can see that there. So nothing out of the ordinary on that part. Let's see what we get over here. We get the 65 watt USB type C charger. We've seen this one before, nothing out of the ordinary with this. Again, we'll get a measurement of the travel weight, so we'll put that to the side. Same as we saw on the Q425MA that we looked at. And then let's see if they give the pen. I, I know it has pen support, but I don't believe this SKU comes with the pen. I'll be pleasantly surprised if it does. No, no pen, but of course we will check it out with some other pens I have here lying around in the studio. But I think that's it. This one is a little bit more or bare bones like we saw on the Q425. Okay, so here we have the unit and this is gonna be the jade black color. Now, we saw the Q425, that was the Jasper gray and we saw the ponder blue on the UX3405. Yes, these naming schemes are very confusing but overall pretty nice build on all of them so far. And again, we get that logo here etched into the lid here and it's a pretty nice impressive design here i think now this is going to have the asus lumina oled display this is going to be a full hd plus 1920 by 1200 like we saw on the q425 but it won't have that 2.8k resolution like we saw on the ux3405 so that is of course more expensive but again having a lumina display here oled is certainly welcome we'd like to see that especially at this price point now Let's see if we can do the one-handed test. Of course, that's the useless test of the day. And yes, you can just about do it. Of course, I have a very slippery table here, but it's not as smooth as I'd like it. Let's try that again. It's a little, little bit light on the bottom there, so it does lift up a little bit. 
but there's the jade black and you can see it here and it's actually a pretty nice design here and again we've seen this design on the others again i love the chiclet style keyboard uh it's got really nice look to it although i think this jade black will show some fingerprints of course you can see the jade black on the lid there with that logo etched into it it's the asus logo for those wondering it's a pretty nice design now the screen goes back as you can see here 180 degrees that's one of the things i like about it the hinge seems pretty nice on it i don't see a lot of screen wobble let's see if we get a lot of flex in the deck here not too much so really nice all metal design here very premium feel to it so far let's see a little bit of give in the chassis but again nothing more than we saw on the q425 or the ux 3405 so pretty nice build overall so i think they did a really nice job here kudos to asus on this there's definitely that to go out to them and then of course there's some asus branding there but pretty nice design overall i mean it's a nice looking laptop as far as i'm concerned Okay, let's get a measurement of the weight with the unit alone. You're looking at 1.293 kilograms, and that would be 2 pounds, 13.6 ounces. So very similar, if not almost exactly the same as the Q425. That's pretty interesting. And then if you put this on top of here, total travel weight, 3 pounds, 5.4 ounces. That's all in with the power charger, and that would be in kilograms. You're looking at... 1.514 kilograms all in for a total travel weight. This is the Q425, and let's see what this weight is as we put it into kilograms here. So this one is 1.291 kilograms or 1.292 kilograms, and that is 2 pounds, 13.6 ounces. Again, very similar weight, and this one is 2 pounds, 13.6 ounces, almost exactly the same, which is not a surprise there. All right, just to get a size comparison, you can see that the Q425 that I just reviewed on the right here in Jasper Gray, and this, of course, is the UM3406 on the left, and that, of course, is in jade black, and they both are showing some fingerprints. Even on this one, you see it. I didn't wipe it down on purpose. Just to show you, this one is already starting to collect fingerprints. It's a really nice all-metal design, but they do show fingerprints. This has that Asus pattern that we like. This one is a little bit more understated and just has the Asus logo there. Tell me which one you'd like better. This one says Asus Zenbook. This again just has that logo. So again, just a different approach. Now look at the footprint. It's pretty much identical as far as this footprint is concerned. Thickness and weight is going to be almost exactly, if not exactly the same. They're using the same chassis, it looks like, and it's a pretty nice all metal design. So I think overall a pretty nice build here and you get a lot of bang for the buck. And it's a premium design. And again, you see both very minimal screen lid flex here in terms of that and you can see it here um you're really not getting a lot of give on it it's a nicely built design here and if we want to take a look at them side by side yeah hardly any screen flex so it's built really well here and then you can see here same thing on this one again they're both and i looked at it already in my review of this one this also is pretty nice screen build here now the displays are going to be i think exactly the same they're looking at oled 14 inches two uh, not 2.8k on these these are 1920 by 1200 of course that means you're getting a full hd plus resolution instead of say a, a 2.8k resolution like we saw on the more expensive 1300 dollar ux3405 so that is just one thing you need to keep uh, aware of of course and you can see these two here as the two displays are here side by side again they're both glossy displays both get pretty bright i have no issues with the brightness they both are hdr displays so they have a peak brightness of 500 nits so i expect them to actually be very similar in terms of the metrics on these but overall a pretty nice layout here let's focus on this one this of course is the um 3406 ha Okay, let's check out the port selection. On the left side is a USB type A port. It's 3.2 Gen 1, of course. That is welcome to see legacy ports and there's some heating vents on the left side. Now moving over to the right side are two USB type C ports. One is a 3.2 Gen 2 port, it's full function. And the other one is a USB 4.0 port that is also full function. So it gives you a lot of that functionality you'd get on a Thunderbolt port if it was Intel, of course. And then you get a 3.5 millimeter microphone headphone combo jack and an HDMI 
HDMI 2.1 TMDS port to round it out. Notably missing, there's no SD card reader of any sort, and I'd like to see those two USB-C ports split up, one on each side. You don't get that here, but of course, at $799, it's a pretty good port selection overall. Now, internally, you can see that there are some differences between the Intel variant, the Q425MA, and this one, of course. But the overall takeaway is they both have a single fan, they both have a 75 watt hour battery, and they both have soldered RAM. Now, this particular model has 16 gigabytes of LP DDR5X RAM, and it is running in dual channel mode. Now it is soldered in, that means it's not upgradable by the user, but because it's soldered in, it's running at the very fast 7,500 megahertz, so that is the silver lining here. So you're getting that fast RAM here at pretty affordable price, so not too shabby. Now the good news is there is upgradable storage here and the unit that has been sent over by Asus here has 512 gigabytes of SSD storage and you're getting some really good reads and writes, certainly fast enough what you need this laptop to do. And I love the fact that if you need more storage, you can expand it out yourself, save some money in the process and gives you a little bit more longevity with this laptop. And you're looking at a Wi-Fi 6E, a Bluetooth 5.3 combo card that is soldered in, not upgradable by the user. Kind of disappointing it's not Wi-Fi 7, but at $799, I'm not going to ding them too hard here. The Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth, both have been working flawlessly, no issues with either one. Now at $799 right now at Walmart, you're getting an OLED display here, 14 inches, 1920 by 1200, a full HD plus resolution, and that's not too bad. So don't get me wrong, this is an excellent panel. It's not gonna be as high resolution as the one we saw back in December with the 2880 by 1800 resolution and that high refresh rate, 120 hertz. Now this has a standard 60 hertz refresh rate. And in a full HD plus resolution, you might see a little bit more pixelation, but the bottom line is it's still an OLED display at the end of the day that means you're going to get the really deep blacks the super vibrant colors and the really high contrast it's all there it's got excellent coverage of the color gamut and it's a very color accurate display so if you're going to do content creation in lightroom photoshop video editing and davinci resolve premiere pro this will certainly get the job done now, one thing I did notice here is the brightness is a little less than the Q425 that I looked at, that Intel variant, which got over 400 nits of brightness. That's the claim brightness by Asus, by the way. Here I got a shade of below that, almost 380 nits or 379 to be exact. So not terrible, but again, slightly less brightness on this particular model. Maybe it's this particular unit, but at the end of the day, it didn't quite reach that 400 nits, which I'd like to see. Now, it is a glossy display, so if you're in direct sunlight, you will notice the glare and reflections, although not too bad especially indoors you'll be perfectly fine but it is a glossy display so just keep that in mind and this is also a touchscreen display pinch to zoom navigating the os with your finger works well and as you can see here it also has pen support now they don't give you the pen in the box like you get on the higher end 1300 dollars model but this one does support pen i've had a few pens work here in the studio with no issues great for taking notes sketching out artwork a nice convenience factor again it's not a convertible but for the note here and there or the quick number you want to jot down or sign a document this certainly will get the job done so this is the camera on the Asus ZenBook 14 OLED with the AMD Ryzen processor here for 2024. 1080p camera, it's an IR camera. That means you can log in with face recognition with Windows Hello. That is the only way as far as Windows Hello, there is no fingerprint scanner on here, but you can use your face recognition to do that. There is a physical shutter switch over the camera there to give you more security and privacy. What do you think about the video quality? What do you think about the audio quality? Now this AMD variant also supports the AI effects or the studio effects here. So you can do the background blur effect, as you see here, this is the standard blur. This is the portrait blur. You could turn that off, of course. And then there's the eye contact, and then there's the auto framing. So this will always keep you in frame, depending on where you are. It will do its best to do that. And of course, uh, that is all part of this AI stuff that they're baking into this. So again, what do you think about it? Let me know in the comments section below. Okay, let's talk performance, and as you can see, the Geekbench numbers here are actually really good, especially single core when we compared it to the Q425 Intel variant we looked at, 2502 versus 2406. This had a slightly less multi-core performance here, 11,769 versus the Intel, which got almost 13,000 there. That actually did really well. And then when it comes to the OpenCL, the GPU performance, slightly less here, 29,993. The Radeon 780M is not quite as good 
good as the Intel Arc graphics here in 2024. Now, when I ran the Cinebench 2024, it did less single core on that score. This is the 10 minute thermal throttling test, of course, 104 versus 99. And then it did really good in multi-core, 811 versus 648. So very interesting and very good performance here on this AMD variant, of course, when it comes to multi-core. And when we looked at the 3D Mark scores here, the Intel variant did better in the Time Spy with the Intel Arc graphics 3815 versus 3271. It had a better Fire Strike score as well, although the integrated Radeon 780M graphics were not too bad. And it also didn't get a passing score. We'll talk about this in a moment on the Time Spy stress test, but it got nearly a passing score. So little thermal throttling detected on the Intel variant. That got a passing score of 98.4%. And of course, I ran the Pugin Bench DaVinci Resolve benchmark to see how this would do in video editing, and it did surprisingly well, scoring an overall score of 710, which was better than the 667 scored by the Q425MA. Pretty impressive. And just like the Q425 Intel variant we looked at, this is not a gaming laptop. There are better options out there, although if you lower some of the settings, you can get some playable frame rates on some of the more popular titles. That is, of course, doable here on this laptop. And as I just mentioned, it scored 95.5% on the Time Spy stress test to see if this will thermal throttle. And of course, it detected a little bit. Remember, 97% is passing, but 95.5% means it detected very little, if any, thermal throttling overall. And when it comes to the surface temperatures under load above the keyboard below the display, you'll notice maybe 39 to 41 degrees Celsius at most there. That, of course, is where the heat dissipates, so that's to be expected. But where you place your fingers on the keyboard, never getting overly hot. Now, on the underside, there are a few hot spots you'll notice under load, something to be aware of. But when you're doing everyday tasks, normal tasks, of course, Microsoft Office, email, web browsing, the heat was not much of an issue. But under heavy load, it will heat up, as you see here. And you will have to contend with some fan noise under load, reaching as high as 51, 52 decibels, which is quite noticeable. So you will have to contend with that fan noise. I'm not a big fan of that. But when you're in the balance mode doing everyday tasks, it was not much of an issue. It really was pretty tame. But again, when you are placing this under heavy load, those fans will become very audible. Now, one of the themes we're seeing here in 2024, whether it be Intel or AMD, is excellent battery life on the ZenBook line here because they share the same 75 watt hour battery, the same resolution, the same refresh rate, and we're seeing excellent results. 13 hours and 24 minutes in the PC Mark 10 modern office test, the video playback test, 15 hours and 12 minutes, which wasn't quite as good as the Intel variant, which did almost 18 hours on that same test. So pretty interesting, but excellent nonetheless. The overall takeaway is longevity is certainly certainly the strong suit on this Asus ZenBook line here for 2024. And the other thing I'm absolutely loving here is the keyboard. Now, just like the Q425, you're looking at 1.4 millimeters of key travel. That means it's comfortable for typing out long documents, emails, and the like. The tactility, the feedback were both very good. The multi-stage backlight worked well here, allowing you to get work done in a dark room or a dimly lit environment. That worked well. It also is the co-pilot key, so you want to access a lot of the AI stuff that you want to do on the internet. That will certainly be easy to do with that button there, of course. And then and of course, it has a glass precision touchpad that I thought worked very well when it comes to scrolling, doing all the gestures. Everything seemed to work as expected, which is good. So very good keyboard and touchpad here on this Asus ZenBook line for 2024. It's one of my favorites. Now, when it comes to the audio, you're looking at Harman Kardon tuned speakers here. You're also looking at Dolby Atmos to help with the spatial audio. The overall volume on it is very good, and you'll hear that the sound is actually really good, filling up a room rather nicely. But of course, I want you to be the judge. You let me know what you think in the comment section below. Now, let's give it a listen. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, let's bring it all home. What do I think about the Asus ZenBook 14 OLED running the AMD Ryzen processor here for 2024? I like it a lot here. It's a 14 inch OLED display. Yes, it's full HD plus, but it is colorful. It's bright enough and it has pen support. Thin and light all metal design with a military standard 8 10 inch rating. That means it's pretty durable. It's got excellent battery life, very good speakers with Dolby Atmos, very good keyboard and touchpad. It's got upgradable storage. It's running the faster LP DDR5X at 7500 megahertz that's really good it's also got a very good price to performance ratio there's a lot of bang for the buck here now the negatives of course you are looking at soldered ram that is something that's pretty standard here in 2024 so not too surprising there you're also looking at the fact that it has a 60 hertz refresh rate not 120 hertz and there is no option for a 2.8k oled display here or the higher resolution you'll have to pay more money for that intel variant noticeable fan noise under load and it can get very warm under load as well, as showed by the numbers. And again, no SD card reader might be a turnoff for some. Although, again, $7.99, I'm not going to ding them too hard here. Again, a lot of bang for the buck. To me, Asus hit a home run, hitting the price, the performance, the display, the battery life, and the overall aesthetics coming in at $7.99. That's hard to beat. So please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and X, the platform formerly known as Twitter. And don't forget to check out my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew, and I'll see you in the next video.